Canada is a costly endeavor for international students as students are expected to pay three times more in tuition fees. With that, students often ask themselves, how can I lessen the financial burden of moving here? Well, one option is to work while studying as working is a quick way to ease the financial burden here in Canada. With that, today's video will discuss the reality of working part-time as an international student here in Canada. I'll be answering questions such as where to find work, what are the common jobs here for students, how much is the expected pay, I like this, this is money talk, and more importantly, I will answer the question that most of you guys have in mind, which is this. Will working a part-time job as an international student be enough to sustain my living expenses here in Canada. I'll give a balanced view of this topic, supporting it with numbers, my analysis, and of course, my personal experience. So, without further ado, let's begin. Okay, first off, where can students find work? There are four things on the top of my mind that will answer this question, and they are Number one, social network. These are friends, family, or the community you meet here in Canada. Personal recommendations from these people are very helpful as they can paint a picture to your prospective employer about who you are as a person and as a worker. That helped me land my first two jobs here in Canada as I kept a really good relationship with my classmates that hooked me up with these gigs. It's also good if that social network works at that job because they can inform you immediately if there is an opening and you can apply directly with their assistance. Second, job fairs or job postings. Job postings are paper postings around the campus or online postings found on the school's website. In this given situation, employers are looking for part-time or casual workers to fill in a temporary need. Job fairs are common around campuses as well, as employers are looking for certain students to fill a particular position in their company. Employers connect with schools that they trust and collect resumes on the spot during these events. If you're lucky enough, you may even be interviewed by the manager, employer, or recruiter on site and make a first good impression. There's a location and a school reputation advantage, making it convenient for you to connect and apply. Third, and the most common way to find work is through websites. It's an easily accessible tool for everyone. You can filter the job that meets your needs, and you can even upload your resume to be reviewed by recruiters or employers. If you're lucky enough again, you may be contacted and invited for an interview. I normally check out Glassdoor, Indeed, LinkedIn, Monster, and even Facebook groups for job postings. Lastly, number four, this is the least used but the most effective method, and that is going directly to your employer and dropping your resume in person. Uh, I don't think that this is the wisest thing to do now during COVID, but I actually use this method to land one of my jobs here in Canada. I literally walked up the store with my resume and cover letter on hand. I spoke with the store manager and was requested to come back for an interview. So yeah, this method may work for you, but maybe not now. The next question you probably have is this. What type of jobs are available for international students? First off, expect to work an entry-level or a low-skilled part-time job when you arrive. From my experience, I noticed that it was pretty common for students to work as receptionists at offices, sales associates or stalkers at retail shops, cashiers at grocery shops, baristas at coffee shops, waitresses or waiters at restaurants, and even food deliverers for Uber Eats or DoorDash. The reason why students work at these particular jobs is because of the high turnover rate and low pay. Students don't mind working in these particular jobs because their primary focus is to sustain themselves financially for a short period before finding their chosen career. Next, are there any restrictions for students? There are many, but the main condition that I want to talk about is this. Students are only allowed to work 20 hours per week off campus. Please, please, please do not work more than 20 hours per week during academic sessions because this will jeopardize your status here in Canada. And if you do, you may even ruin your chances to apply for PR. I say this in a serious tone because there are serious consequences for breaching this rule. 
As an example, this student was deported from Canada for working full time. So check the story out and learn from his mistakes. Don't even try to do funny maths, such as working four hours this week and then working 36 hours the next week, trying to argue that you work 20 hours per week on average. It doesn't work that way. The 36 hours you work in that week is a breach. You can only work 20 hours per week during academic sessions, with the exception of working full-time on scheduled academic breaks, like Christmas or spring break. Also, not a lot of students know this, but you are not allowed to work before your first day of classes start. Also, please note that you are responsible for managing your own time. If your manager assigns you more hours than you need to work, it is your responsibility to decline this or ask for a decrease in your work hours. Just explain that you need to follow the conditions stated on your study permit and that you can only work 20 hours per week during academic sessions. I'm saying this because not all managers know of this policy and may accidentally assign you more hours than you're permitted to work. So please keep that in mind. Okay, now let's talk about the most sought after question in this video, which involves money. How much is the expected pay? But before that, if you are enjoying my content so far, it would really mean a lot to me if you could please like and subscribe to my channel for more information on Canadian immigration. Also guys, just a quick reminder, I am currently in the woodworks of launching my online course very soon. And it's for DIYers that want to apply for a study permit, a postgraduate work permit, and eventually qualify for PR under Express Entry. So I'll keep you posted on my Instagram, TikTok, and YouTube channel for more updates. But yeah guys, I'm so excited to share this journey with you all and I can't wait to share this online course with you guys very soon. Okay, back to the main topic. Most of the jobs that I stated earlier offer minimum wage. Current wage in Canada ranges between 11.45 to 16 Canadian dollars per hour. And you can find this information from the Retail Council of Canada website. British Columbia's minimum wage is currently at $14.60, but it is expected to rise to $15.20 on June 1st, 2021, while Ontario's minimum wage is currently at $14.25 per hour. I just want to make a quick mention of these because these provinces attract the most international students. When I worked as a sales associate back in 2017, I earned 13 Canadian dollars per hour before taxes. I would be bringing home roughly $750 per month after taxes. I converted that money to my home currency and I thought, wow, Rachel's ballin'. She got the drip. But in reality, I could barely afford a Starbucks drip coffee without feeling guilty. I was actually making struggling wage and it was worrisome. So given that, maybe the next big question that you guys have is, will working a part-time job be enough to sustain my living expenses here in Canada? The short answer to that is no. The long answer can be supported by maths because I am a math wizard. So let's break down my expenses here in Vancouver. Beside tuition costs, which range between 15,000 Canadian dollars to 30,000 Canadian dollars per year, my next biggest cost is living expenses. This is made up of rent, food, utilities, transportation, and phone bills. In general, if I were to carry this burden all by myself, it can cost me anywhere between 1,000 to 2,000 Canadian dollars per month. My hard-earned money of $750 back in 2017 would put me with an eviction notice and a phone disconnection. Obviously, it's hard to speak for everyone else because everyone has their own comfort levels and standards of living. But the main point that I'm trying to make here is that you're not supposed to depend on working in Canada as your sole source of income. You need all the help that you can get. If you choose to carry this task, it may be challenging and stressful. And placing yourself in that position may leave you vulnerable and may even compromise your studies or your stay here in Canada. Now for my favorite part, let's talk about the takeaways or what we can learn from this topic. Number one, prepare your finances before you come to Canada. It's better to have more than enough just in case shit hits the fan. 
For example, if I had not saved up the money that I worked as an international student and as a full-time worker, and if I also didn't have the support that I have currently here in Canada and COVID hit, I would be burning cash at a very high rate just to stay here, which is impractical and unsustainable. No one ever anticipated this pandemic to happen, but it did. And I'm grateful that I built up my cash reserve before all of this happened. The last thing I want is to be stuck in a foreign country on a visitor status in the middle of a pandemic. Oh wait, save as much as you can and get all the help that you can get. Number two, working part-time is not enough. I've explained the maths earlier to back up my point. Given that solely working a part-time job is not sustainable. I want you to make well-informed decisions before embarking on this risky journey. As the last thing that I want for you guys is to have a hard time here in Canada. And I know your reasons for coming here as you do have long-term goals in settling here in Canada. Which is why I'm telling you all of this so that you don't jeopardize your situation by making short-sighted decisions. Third and lastly, studying is your first priority. Always look to working a part-time job as your bonus or allowance money. Full-time work comes after studies or after you complete your program when you apply for a postgraduate work permit. But to get there, you must complete your studies, so keep that in mind. So there you have it, folks. That's the truth about working in Canada as an international student. I wish you all the best in your financial preparation before coming here to Canada. I don't want this to come off as a negative. I have good intentions. That's why I'm sharing all of this information because I don't want you guys to have a hard time while you're here because of finances. So hopefully you take my advice to heart and be encouraged to do things the proper and the right way. Thank you again for taking the time to listen to me. I hope that you are all safe. And of course, I'll see you in the next one. Cheers.